Good morning, dear students. So today we are going to discuss physiology of digestion. And uh, our today's topic lecture, uh, our today's lecture topic is digestion in the oral cavity and digestion in the stomach. So the human and other animals must obtain their basic organic molecules from food. Unlike plants, which can form organic molecules using inorganic compounds. Uh, in the other words, digestion is defined as the complex physiological process by which food that has entered the alimentary tract undergoes physical and chemical changes and the nutrients in it are absorbed into the blood and lymph. Or another definition of digestion is that digestion is a complex uh, physiological process by which food is broken down into simple chemical substances that can be absorbed and used as nutrients by the body. As for example, carbohydrates are broken down to monosaccharides, uh, glucose, as uh, example is glucose. Proteins are broken down to amino acids and lipids are broken down to fatty acids and glycerol. Uh, there are four stages of digestion. The first uh, stages of food processing, the uh, stages or the stages of food processing. Ingestion, which is taken in nutrients. Digestion, uh, using physical and chemical means to break down complex organic molecules into smaller usable parts. Absorption pulling in digested molecules into the cells of the digestive tract, then into the blood. And ejection, the removal of waste food materials from the body. Ejection or elimination. Uh, according to the different features, the digestion can be divided, can be classified into types. The first classification of the types of digestion is based on the origin of enzymes. And according to our region of enzymes, digestion, the types of digestion are following. Autolytic digestion, when food contains enzymes for digestion itself. Second type is so-called own digestion or proper digestion when enzymes for digestion are produced by the organism. And the last one is so-called symbiotic digestion, when microorganisms of the large in intestine take part in digestion. The other um, classification of the types of digestion is based on the localization of the process. So according to localization, there are two types of digestion. Intracellular digestion, which includes phagocytosis, pino and endocytosis, and extracellular digestion, which also can be subdivided into distant digestion or cavital digestion. Cavital means in the cavities. Br uh, the breakdown of food in cavity of intestine without direct contact with intestinal mucosa, far from place enzymes produced. It allows larger particles to be broken down into smaller particles and done by enzymes from pancreatic or intestinal juice. Uh, and second type is a 
contact digestion or membrane digestion, breakdown of nutrients on in intestinal surface by enzymes bound to the enterocyte structures. Allows smaller particles to be broken down into simple monomers by enzymes lining the intestinal microvilli. Anatomically and functionally, the digestive system can be divided into a tubular uh, part or a gastrointestinal tract or alimentary canal, so called, and accessory organs and associated glands. The gastrointestinal uh, tract or digestive system uh, is a tubular structure extending from the mouth up to anus with a length of about 30 feet, which stays around 8 meters long. Uh, the, uh, it opens to the external environment on both ends. And it is formed, GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, is formed uh, by two types of organs, so-called primary digestive organs and accessory digestive organs. Primary digestive organs are the organs where actual digestion takes place. There are uh, mouth, mouth and uh, uh, pharynx and pharynx. Uh, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestine. And accessory digestive organs are those which help uh, primary digestive organs in the process of digestion. There are teeth, tongue and salivary glands in the oral cavity, exocrine part of pancreas, uh, which secretes pancreatic juice, liver and gallbladder, which also help in intestinal digestion. As we know, the oral cavity, teeth and tongue uh, take part in mechanical processing, moistening, mixing uh, food with the uh, saliva. Uh, salivary glands will assist and uh, salivary glands secrete uh, the lubricating fluid um, containing enzymes that break down carbo carbohydrates primarily. Then pharynx, the muscular uh, uh, pharynx function is muscular propulsion of materials into the esophagus. The esophagus, as you know, transports materials to the next portion called stomach. The stomach is responsible for chemical breakdown of materials by acid and enzymes uh, in gastric juice and mechanical processing uh, through the muscular contraction. Uh, then small intestine is responsible for enzymatic digestion and absorption of water, organic uh, substrates, vitamins, ions. The digestion in the small intestine uh, depends upon the secretion of uh, pancreas, exocrine cells secrete buffers and uh, digestive enzymes. And uh, endocrine cells of pancreas, as you know, secrete hormones. The hormones which are, are so-called GIT, gastrointestinal hormones. Uh, intestinal uh, digestion also is associated with the functions of liver and gallbladder. Uh, the main function of the liver, as you know, secretion of bile, which is very important for the lipid digestion. Uh, and has also many um, other vital functions we'll discuss on the next lecture. And gallbladder which stores and concentrates bile. And finally, large intestine, uh, which is responsible for dehydration and compaction of undigestible materials in preparation for their elimination.
the general organization of gastrointestinal tract. So, the, um, a typical section of the intestinal wall showing the following layers from the uh, inner to the outer surface. So, the first layer is um, a mucosa. The mucosa uh, consists of the epithelium, which usually simple columnar with goblets, Lamina propria, uh, connective tissue deep to epithelium, and muscularis mucosa, which produces folds uh, in the small intestine or rugae in the stomach. Uh, the next layer is submucosa. The submucosa is made up of loose connective tissue and contains submucosal plexus and blood vessel, the submucosal plexus, also called Meissner's plexus. Uh, uh, muscularis externa consists of smooth muscles, usually two layers, controlled by the so-called uh, our box or myenteric plexus. There are outer longitudinal muscle layer and inner layer of circular muscle and uh, the last one serosa layer of mesentery or adventitia uh, depending on location uh, in addition a sparse layer of smooth muscle fibers the muscularis mucosa as i said already lies in the deep layers of the mucosa uh, the individual smooth muscle fibers in the gastrointestinal tract uh, are arranged in bundles of as many as 1000 parallel fibers, parallel fibers. In the longitudinal muscles, longitudinal muscles, muscle layer, these bundles extend longitudinally down the intestinal tract. In the circular muscle layer, they, uh, they extend around the gut. Uh, within each bundle of muscle fibers are electrically connected with each other through large numbers of gap junctions. Therefore, electrical signals can travel from one to the next fiber. Same time, the bundles fuse with each other at many points. Therefore, each muscle layer functions as a sensitum. When an AP is elicited anywhere, within the muscle mass, it travels in all directions in the muscle. Also, a few connections exist between the longitudinal and circular muscle layers, uh, so uh, that excitation of one of these layers usually excites the other as well. The smooth muscle of the GIT undergoes almost continual slow electrical activity. This activity tends to have two basic types of electrical waves, so-called slow waves, slow waves and spikes. Uh, these terms are well known to you from the physiology of excitable tissues. The smooth muscle of the gastrointestinal tract has spontaneous rhythmical fluctuations in membrane potential between about negative 65 and negative 45 millivolts. This is called basic electrical rhythm. Abreverture is BER. Uh, is, it is initiated by the interstitial cells of Kajal. Stellate medenchial pacemaker cells 
with smooth muscle-like features that send long multiplying branched processes into the intestinal smooth muscle. The uh, basic electrical rhythm itself rarely causes muscle contraction. However, they do control the appearance uh, of intermittent spike potentials, spike potentials, and the spike potentials in turn actually cause the muscle contraction. The intensity of slow waves varies between 5 and 15 millivolts and their frequency ranges in different parts of the uh, gastrointestinal tract between 3 and 12 per minute. About 3 in the body of the stomach, as much as 12 in the duodenum and about 8 or 9 waves in the terminal ileum. Therefore, the rhythm of contraction of the body of the stomach usually is about 3 per minute, of the duodenum about 12 per minute, and the ileum 8 to uh, 9 per minute. In the column, basic electrical rhythm rate rises from about 9 per minute. At, uh, at the second to about 16 uh, uh, to about 16. The spike potentials are true action potentials. They occur uh, automatically when the resting membrane potential of the gastrointestinal tract smooth muscle becomes more positive than about negative 40 millivolts. The normal resting membrane potential is about is in between 50 to 60 uh, millivolts. The spike potentials appear on the peaks on the peaks of slow wave potential uh, and then the higher the slow wave potential rises above this level, the greater the frequency, the greater the frequency of the spike potentials, ranging between 1 to 10 spikes per second. The depolarizing portion of each spike is due to calcium ions influx and the repolarizing portion is due to potassium ions efflux. Many factors affect the um, BER or basic electrical rhythm. Uh, these factors are stretching of the muscle, uh, stimulation by acetylcholine, stimulation by the parasympathetic nerves that secrete acetylcholine, Stimulation by gastrointestinal hormones. Uh, factors that make the membrane potential more negative or that hyperpolarize membrane will cause hyperpolarization of membrane are uh, epinephrine and uh, norepinephrine secreted by postganglionic sympathetic fibers and uh, uh, hormones of adrenal medulla, epinephrine and norepinephrine. The functions of basic electrical rhythm is to coordinate uh, peristaltic and other motor activity. Uh, contraction occurs during the depolarizing part of the wave, depolarizing part of the wave, after vagotomy or transection of the stomach wall, peristalsis in the stomach becomes irregular and chaotic. Functions of gastrointestinal tract. The functions of gastrointestinal tract uh, can be also classified as digestive functions and non-digestive 
functions. So look, the digestive functions of gastrointestinal tract are secretory function, motor function, absorption, uh, and excretory function. All these following function as a defensive function, homeostatic function, uh, and regulatory function, regulatory or endocrine function, are so-called non-digestive functions, but which are also very important for the normal process of digestion uh, in the GIT. <sighs> Now we'll discuss briefly the general principles of GIT functions control. So uh, there are two mechanisms of regulation. As you know, it, it well neural mechanism and humoral mechanism and humoral mechanism. Uh, the neural control of the gut wall showing the myenteric and uh, submucosal plexuses, so-called enteric nervous system, which is an intrinsic controlling mechanism. Uh, we, we also know this system, enteric nervous system or metasympathetic nervous system. It's one of the uh, variants of metasympathetic nervous system activity. Uh, extrinsic control of these plexuses is due to functions of autonomic nervous system, its sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. And the hormonal control is based on the secretion of gastrointestinal hormones by APUD system over GIT. As you know, the local and uh, the local neural control based on intrinsic nerve plexuses of metasympathetic nervous system. Uh, this intrinsic uh, system of GIT extends from esophagus up to the anus and it is divided into myenteric or Auerbach plexus which lies between longitudinal and circular muscle layer and uh, uh, the main function of this plexus is control over GIT movements the control of motor activity of gastrointestinal tract. And the second division is a submucosal plexus or Meissner's plexus. It lies in submucosa and its function control GIT secretion and local blood flow. Subfunctions, it serves sensory functions by receiving signals, receiving signals from GIT epithelium and from stretch receptors of GIT wall. So, um, collectively, these neurons constitute so-called enteric nervous system, as I said already, which contains about 100 million sensory, inter and motor neurons. It is connected to the CNS by the uh, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers, by parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers, uh, but can function autonomously without these connections. The myenteric plexus innervates the longitudinal and circular smooth muscle layers, as I said already, 
and which is concerned primarily with motor control, whereas the submucous plexus innervates the glandular epithelium, intestinal endocrine cells, and submucosal blood vessels, and is primarily involved in the control of intestinal secretion. The neurotransmitters of an um, uh, enteric nervous system include acetylcholine, norepinephrine, serotonin, GABA, ATP, nitric oxide, and other peptides and um, polypeptides. The autonomic nervous system controls uh, the activity of enteric nervous system by sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. The parasympathetic nervous system's activity depends um, uh, depends upon the vagus nerve that innervates GIT from esophagus up to proximal two-third of transverse colon. Uh, also, pelvic parasympathetic nerve, S2 to S4, innervates GIT from uh, distal one-third of transverse colon. Its function to increase peristalsis and tone relaxes sphincters and to increase digestive secretion. Sympathetic nervous system. Three ganglionic fibers, the red color, as you see, the blue color parasympathetic, the red color sympathetic. Uh, three ganglionic sympathetic uh, fibers originate in T5 to L2 segments of spinal cord pass through sympathetic chain, synapse with postganglionic neurons in celiac uh, and mesenteric and hypogastric ganglia, uh, and postganglionic fibers innervate uh, GIT, gastrointestinal tract. Its functions to decrease peristalsis and tone contract sphincters and decrease digestive secretion. Uh, so, the, here on the slide you may see um, that uh, GIT receives a dual extrinsic innervation from the autonomic nervous system with parasympathetic cholinergic activity, generally increasing the activity of GIT and increases secretion of GIT and sympathetic noradrenergic activity, generally decreasing it while causing sphincters to contract. Uh, and the last one is uh, the um, hormonal regulation of GIT, another one mechanism. The pericrine effect of chemical messengers and gastrointestinal hormones is the basis of this uh, mechanism of uh, regulation called humoral regulation. The hormones and humoral agents secreted by cells in the mucosa and transported in the circulation to influence the functions of the stomach, the intestine, the pancreas and the gallbladder. They also act in a pericrine fashion. So, as you see, there are two mechanisms of uh, GIT functions control. These mechanisms are neural mechanism and humoral mechanism, which can perform their functions at two levels, local and central levels. Now uh, we are going to discuss the um, functions of the 
oral cavity. As you know, in the mouth, food is mixed with saliva and then propelled into edophagus. And there are two basic processes that take place in the oral cavity. First process called mechanical process, mastication or chewing. Uh, breaks up large food particles, mixes uh, the food with the secretion of the salivary glands and rolls it into a moist soft mess called uh, bolus, suitable for swallowing. So, the functions of the oral cavity is a mechanical breakdown of food, then chemical breakdown of food, the chemical breakdown of food is based on the action of salivary enzymes. Then, um, propelling food into the next portion of the GIT by swallowing. There are also analysis of taste due to the series of taste receptors of the oral cavity. There is also protection, protective function and moistening of uh, tongues and lips for articulation. Saliva. The secretion of saliva ranges between 0.8 to 1.5 liters per day. It is a slightly acid solution, 6 to 7.4. Uh, which contains salts and organic substances secreted mainly by three pairs of salivary glands. These glands are sublingual, submandibular and parotid glands. Uh, uh, the uh, functions of saliva is a chemical processing of food, due to enzymes. As you know, um, saliva contains uh, salivary amylase, alpha amylase, which is uh, uh, also called ptialine, uh, which splits starch into maltose and alpha limit dextrins. It also contains weak lingual lipase secreted by glands on the tongue which plays a minor role in the fat's digestion as you understand uh, it also contains uh, mucin glycoprotein which lubricate the food and protects the oral mucosa it also contains lysozyme that attacks uh, the walls of bacteria. Uh, it contains lactoferrin, which binds iron and has bacteriostatic effect. And it also contains minerals, sodium, potassium, chloride, um, and um, bicarbonates, bicarbonates. The functions of saliva are following chemical processing of food, it moistens food and facilitates swallowing. Uh, in the process of moistening food, chemical and mechanical breakdown due to chewing movement, due to mastication, the food uh, becomes a bolus. It lubricates tongue and lips and facilitates articulation, as I said already. It has protective uh, function due to the um, biological active substances it contains listed earlier. And there is also excretory function. Some substances can be excreted uh, through the saliva. Uh, this, this figure, what it illustrates? It illustrates the parasympathetic uh, nervous pathways for regulation of uh, salivation, showing that parasympathetic, yeah, as you see, showing that salivary glands are controlled mainly by 
parasympathetic signals from salivary nuclei that are located in the medulla oblongata and pons, as you know, and are excited by both taste and tactile stimuli um, from the um, uh, from the tongue and the other areas of the mouth from the receptors of the oral cavity. Some uh, certain tactile stimuli, such a presence of um, smooth uh, objects in the mouth, like a pebble, for instance, cause marked salivation, whereas rough objects cause less or even inhibit salivation. Salivation can also be stimulated or um, inhibited by impulses arriving in salivary nuclei from higher centers of uh, the central nervous system of the CNS. When the person uh, eats or smells favorite food, salivation is greater than when disliked food is smelled or eaten. It is clear. The appetite area of the brain, which is located in the anterior hypothalamus, um, taste and smell areas of cerebral cortex and amygdala also regulate these effects. Sympathetic stimulation can also increase secretion of saliva, but much less uh, than parasympathetic. So, then does parasympathetic secretion has the sympathetic nerves originate from the superior cervical ganglia and travel along the blood vessels to the salivary glands. Uh, and it also, a uh, sympathetic nervous system, also uh, affects secretion, uh, not only secretion, but also blood supply of the glands. Phases of uh, salivary secretion. So, salivary secretion is uh, based on uh, neural and uh, neural control, which in turn can be divided into con unconditioned and uh, conditioned. unconditioned and conditioned. The unconditioned secretion of saliva takes place when food is taken into the mouth which in turn stimulates receptors in the oral cavity, chemo and mechanoreceptors. The food stimulates nerve endings, as I said, receptors in the mouth and a stream of ingoing nerve impulses will travel along taste nerve to salivary nuclei in the medulla oblongata and pons. The result of this is that outgoing nerve impulses of secretomotor nerves from the autonomic nervous system to gland evoke secretion of saliva. Another mechanism of salivation based on conditioned reflex. Uh, for example, sight of food, smell of food, even thought of food and sounds of its preparation uh, become associated with the taste of food. And a result of this, that ingoing nerve impulses from, for example, uh, visual receptors or uh, olfactory receptors, yeah, will travel 
to the corresponding areas in the CNS, in the brain cortex, for example, to the visual center. Uh, the same time, simultaneously, ingoing nerve impulses will travel to the salivary center from the uh, taste uh, receptors of the mouth. And the result of this is association pathways which become established between two centers in the brain. One center which is responsible for conditioned secretion of saliva, for example, visual center, and the unconditioned center of salivation. Uh, the parasympathetic nerves nerve releases acetylcholine, which greatly uh, increases uh, salivary secretion, and it also uh, releases vasoactive intestinal polypeptide (VIP), uh, which dilates the salivary gland, gland blood vessels. And by that way, it increases salivation. The sympathetic nerve, nerves will cause secretion of small amounts of saliva rich in protein and glycoprotein. And also for addition that the parotid glands secrete the serous type watery saliva the submandibular and sublingual glands secrete both the serous type and mucus. The buccal glands secrete only mucus saliva. Mastication, as I said already, or chewing uh, is uh, when the food is broken down, mixes uh, with the saliva and rolling food into a moist, soft mess, which is called bolus. Most of the muscles of chewing are innervated by the motor branch of the CN5 trigeminal nerve, and the chewing process is controlled by nuclei in the brain stem. Chewing of food is important for digestion of all types of food and it aids in the digestion of food uh, for the following reasons. The digestive enzymes act only on the surface of food particles, so it increases uh, the surface area for contact with digestive enzymes. And it also grinding the food to a very fine particles. Swallowing. The swallowing is uh, the complex act which is initiated voluntarily and completed involuntarily. Uh, this process is staged process and it can be subdivided into three stages. The first stage of swallowing called oral stage, oral stage, it is voluntarily and it initiates the swallowing process. Second stage of swallowing uh, called pharyngeal stage. This uh, stage is involuntary and it constitutes uh, the passage of food through the pharynx into the esophagus. And the last one, third stage of uh, swallowing or deglutition called esophageal stage, which is a slow, uh, involuntary, it promotes passage of food from the pharynx to the stomach. The reflex response is triggered by afferent impulses in the trigeminal nerve, 
glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve. Uh, these impulses are, are integrated in the nucleus tractus solitarius and nucleus retroambiguous in the medulla oblongata and the efferent fibers from the um, pharyngeal uh, to the will pass to the pharyngeal musculature and the tongue via CN5, 10, 11 and 12 and it will promote uh, deglutition or swallowing. Now we should uh, discuss briefly uh, the digestion in the stomach which follows digestion in the oral cavity. So, the peristalsis uh, of the esophagus pushes swallowed food from one end of the esophagus to the other um, circular and long due to the circular and longitudinal muscle contraction towards the lower esophageal or gastroesophageal sphincter. The lower esophageal sphincter remains closed until food is pushed through it by peristalsis into the stomach. By the way, the lower esophageal sphincter is not a true sphincter muscle that can be identified histologically. The stomach. The stomach is a G-shaped bulge uh, or pouch. Structurally, stomach can be divided into the cardiac region or cardia, fundus greater and lesser curvature, body of stomach that comprises two-thirds of the stomach, and pyloric region or antrum, the distal portion of the stomach. The outer surface, uh, sorry, the outer wall of the stomach consists of three smooth muscle coats, three smooth muscle layers, as you may see, longitudinal, circular, and the oblique muscles. The inner surface of the stomach is thrown into a series of folds known as Rugge, rugge uh, which increase the surface area of gastric mucosa and very important for the digestion in the stomach. The opening of these folds into the stomach lumen called gastric pits. The mucosal cells lining them are called exocrine gastric glands exocrine gastric glands uh, the, these are several there are several types of cells in the gastric glands that uh, collectively secrete so uh, um, secretion commonly called gastric juice are uh, two to three liters per day. Goblet cells or mucus cells secrete mucus that protects mucosa that protects mucosa uh, from acid and from pepsin also. The parietal cells or Oxyntic cells, oxyntic cells, parietal cells between a mucous cells and a chief cells uh, secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Hydrochloric acid kills bacteria. The intrinsic factor binds with vitamin B12 and allows absorption in ileum. 
uh, vitamin B12 is required for maturation of uh, red blood cells in the bone marrow. A patient with gastrectomy has to receive B12 orally together with intrinsic factor or through injections to prevent the development of pernicious anemia. Chief cells. The chief cells uh, which contain zymogen granules and secrete pepsinogen which is an inactive form of the protein digestive enzyme pepsin activated by hydrofluoric acid. When it is activated it becomes pepsin and it starts chemical breakdown of protein to small peptides. Uh, the chief cells also secrete gastric lipase which digest emulsificated fats and as well as a lingual lipase plays a minor role in fats digestion. G cells in the antrum. G cells. The uh, G cells look here yeah the G cells uh, secrete gastrin, gastrointestinal hormone, which stimulates growth of gastric glands and uh, it stimulates secretion of large amounts of gastric juice. There are also other um, endocrine cells, as for example. Uh, histamine secreted cells which act as paracrine cells controlling acid secretion in adjacent parietal cells. The surface epithelium cells, surface epithelium cells secrete bicarbonates into a covering uh, and resistant layer containing mucus and making it alkaline. As a result, the epithelial surface remains close to neutral. Uh, gastric juice also contains minerals, ions, sodium, potassium, chloride, phosphate, magnesium. It also contains mucin, lysozyme, urea and other organic and inorganic substances. The gastric mucosa contains many deep glands which also can be identified by their topography, the topography. The pyloric zone, pyloric zone, uh, the pyloric glands mostly secrete mucus and gastrin. In the cardiac zone, in the cardiac zone, the um, cardiac glands, so-called cardiac glands, secrete mostly mucus and finally fundi glands, the fundi glands secrete uh, or gastric glands also so-called, they contain all types of uh, secretory cells, parietal cells, chief cells and uh, goblet cells. Here on that slide you may see the uh, composition of uh, gastric juice and uh, its pH as you see it fluctuates and ranges in between 1.6 to 3.2. It contains pepsin, protein digestive enzyme, it contains weak gastric lipase playing a minor role in digestion of fats it also contains other components, we have listed them earlier. Here on that slide you also may see the localization of these glands, cardiac glands, gastric glands, um, their uh, glands in pylorus or pyloric glands and uh, the type of secretion by each type of glands. Only uh, gastric glands uh, contain all types of uh, cells. Functions of the hydro or functions of the hydrofluoric acid. 
Oh, sorry. Pepsinogen activation. It activates pepsin, uh, pepsinogen, which then becomes active pepsin. Then it maintains an optimal pH. Uh, it denaturates proteins, takes part in swelling of proteins. It also has bacteriostatic effect. It regulates the gastric emptying and stimulates uh, production of gastrin by G cells and activates duodenal enterokinase. Functions of the stomach. The first function of the stomach is um, the stomach is a reservoir for food during, uh, during meals. It is clear. Next function is secretory function. It is based on the secretion of gastric juice, composition of which we discussed earlier. The motor function. The motor function of the stomach is based on uh, different types of motor activity. It is simply speak a mixing chamber. This mixing chamber which uh, churns food into semi-fluid chyme, it is called chyme, and then delivers it into the next portion of gastrointestinal tract called uh, duodenum. Next function, absorption. Absorption of water, alcohol, some drugs takes place in the stomach. There is also defensive function, defensive function, we discussed it already earlier. Regulatory function, regulatory or increatory function, uh, secretion of gastrointestinal hormones. Hemopoietic function, which is related to secretion of intrinsic factor or causal factor. And excretory function, urea, uric acid, creatinine, leads, and some drugs also are excreted. And the, the generally uh, homeostatic function. Homeostatic function, it plays a very important role in the regulation of pH uh, through the transportation of hydrogen and bicarbonates. Phases of gastric secretion. So, uh, <clears throat> regulation of gastric secretion and gastric motility. Gastric motility and gastric secretion are regulated by neural and humoral mechanisms. The neural components are uh, local, <clears throat> sorry, autonomic reflexes involving cholinergic neurons and impulses from the CNS by way of the vagus nerves. The humoral components are the gastrointestinal hormones. Phases of gastric secretion are subdivided into following phases. The first phase called cephalic phase. The cephalic phase as well as a um, cephalic phase of salivation are uh, divided into conditioned and unconditioned. The presence of food in the stomach, in, oh sorry, the presence of food in the mouth reflexly stimulate, stimulates gastric secretion. The efferent fibers uh, for this reflex are in the vagus nerves. Vagally mediated increases in gastric secretion are easily conditioned. The sight of food, smell and thought of food increase gastric secretion. These increases are due to alimentary conditioned reflexes that become established early in the life. The cephalic influence are responsible for one uh, fifth to one half of the gastric juice secreted in response to a meal. So, conditioned and 
unconditioned. Next phase called gastric phase. Food in the stomach accelerates the increase in gastric secretion produced by the sight, smell and presence of food in the mouth in the previous phase. Receptors in the wall of the stomach and mucosa respond to stretch and chemical stimuli and it excites the long vaga, vagal reflexes and local enteric reflexes and also gastrin uh, secretion, gastrin mechanism, which ensures continued gastric juice secretion and also ensures its motility. So this phase, gastric phase, is uh, responsible for two-thirds of total gastric secretion. The last phase of gastric secretion called intestinal phase. Uh, this phase, phase starts, look here, this slide, cephalic, gastric and intestinal. It starts when chyme, which is semi-fluid food, following digestion in the stomach, distends the duodenum, both vagus and um, intrinsic nerve plexus, uh, duodenal mucosa, which secretes secretin, CCK, GIP, entering the bloodstream, inhibits gastrin release and secretion of the acid gastric juice and also inhibits uh, gastric motility. Uh, gastrin secretion is inhibited when the pH of gastric content falls to 2. It also uh, inhibited by fear, anger, anxiety and sympathetic nerve stimulation. Here on that slide you may see the mechanisms of each phase. Cephalic phase, conditioned and uh, unconditioned. Conditioned and unconditioned. Uh, gastric phase and uh, finally intestinal phase. Types of um, um, gastric motility. So, the motor functions of the stomach are following. First function is a storage of large quantities of food because, as we said, the first function of the stomach is a so-called reservoir function. And mixing of food with gastric juice until it forms semi-fluid mixture called chyme. And also slow emptying of food from the stomach into the small intestine. The types of stomach's motility. Uh, an intense contraction are seen in the empty stomach, in the empty stomach, <coughs> when it is empty for a long time. These are rhythmic peristaltic contractions in the body of the stomach. When it occurs in the stomach, the person feels a sensation of pain. They begin 12 to 24 hours after the last meal and reach greatest intensity in 3 to 4 days of starvation. Hunger contraction are often associated with a feeling of hunger. When they become extremely strong, 
they fuse together to cause a uh, continuing titanic contraction lasting uh, for two to three minutes when food enters uh, the stomach a vagal reflex greatly reduces the tone of the muscular wall of the body so it can bulge outward accommodating greater quantities of food up to a limit of about 1.5 liters this reflex is triggered by movement of pharynx and esophagus and enteric nervous system also that releases inhibitory neurotransmitters and it also vaguely mediated the mediator adenosine peristalsis occurs while food in is in the stomach peristalsis originates from the pacemaker zone on the greater curvature of the stomach food moves toward the antrum and mixes with gastric juice the semi-fluid mixture called chyme is formed chyme will be carried through the pylorus in small portions and small quantities the sphincter then contracts forcing chyme back by retropulsions and mixes the food with gastric juice again entral system the entral system is the contraction of distal stomach caused by each wave of peristalsis it also helps in uh, gastric empty anti-peristalsis as you know can be seen in a complex reflex act coordinated by medulla oblongata and cold uh, vomiting and uh, the final uh, stage is a uh, gastric empty gastric empty the uh, motility of the stomach and uh, the stomach empty depends upon different factors so the factors that promote motility of the stomach and that promotes gastric emptying are uh, gastric distension gastrin acetylcholine motiline and increased vagus tone the factors that inhibit motility of the stomach and its emptying or decrease gastric emptying are following cck gip and gastrin which are gastrointestinal hormones have a mild effect then the degree of duodenal distension duodenal distension then uh, proteins uh, fats the products of proteins and uh, uh, fats um, digestion in the chyme uh, high uh, acidity of the chyme and high osmolarity of the chyme and also decreased vagal or increased sympathetic stimulation so these factors will uh, inhibit will um, inhibit gastric emptying methods of gastric uh, secretory function examination basically all methods of um, uh, gastric secretion and gastric motility investigation are subdivided into experimental method uh, here you may see simple fistula method yeah or, or simple fistula of the stomach by bicep 
Experiment of shunt feeding with esophagotomia by Pavlov. Isolated miniature stomach or pouch by Pavlov. So these methods, these methods are so-called experimental methods. And the clinical methods, methods, yeah, using probe, endoscopy with biopsy, intragastric pH metry, without probes, electrogastrography, X-ray method, X-ray examination, the radio peel, laboratory methods. Here on that slide, you may see some <clears throat> procedure of uh, um, some feeding. For example, here you see the some feeding on this picture, the simple fistula, the hollow tube inserted into the lumen on the stomach. And through this tube, the gastric juice can be collected and investigated the influence of different factors on its secretion and its composition also can be examined. And this one, a hole, as you see, is made um, in the neck of an anesthetized dog as a phagus is transversely cut and the cut ends are drawn out through the hole in the neck. Uh, when the dog eats food, it uh, comes out through the cut end of esophagus. And, uh, but the dog has the, the satisfaction of eating the food. That's why this experiment called sham feeding, sham feeding. This experimental procedure is supported by the preparation of Pavlov's uh, of Pavlov pouch, which with a fistula from the stomach. The fistula opens to exterior and used to absorb the gastric secretion. Sham feeding is useful to demonstrate the secretion of gastric juice during cephalic phase. Uh, in the same animal after vegetomia, sham feeding does not induce gastric secretion. And this experiment proves the role of vagus nerve during cephalic phase. And here you also may see the Pavlov's pouch and Heidenheim pouch. Methods of gastric motor functions examination are electrogastrography, the recording of the electrical activity, and uh, gastrography. So, today on the lecture, we have discussed uh, the uh, general principles of GIT uh, regulation. We have discussed the types of digestion, uh, stages of digestion, and uh, some aspects of digestion in the two divisions of uh, the GIT, in the oral cavity, digestion in the oral cavity, secretion, motility, absorption, regulation of secretion and motility in the oral cavity, and uh, the same uh, processes in the stomach, secretion, motility, absorption. So, on the next lecture, we are going to discuss the next uh, portions of gastrointestinal tract and basic principles of their organization and their function. So, thank you for your attention. See you on the next lecture. Goodbye. Давайте уточним на